Let us in. Let us in. Cult status amongst the Tory grassroots, dreaded by number 10. The ERG, led by Chairman Jacob rees mogg Alongside him, self-proclaimed Brexit hardman Steve Baker. It's um, it's World Activity Day, so I thought I'd come skydiving. The two have bedeviled Theresa May's Brexit plans. We have sometimes run rings around the state and the party. But last month, the ERG crashed to earth, splitting over Theresa May's deal. Steve Baker, one of 28 who stayed opposed, Jacob Rees-Mogg voted with the Prime Minister. Brexit Day was pushed back six months to October. Critics of the ERG within the Conservative Party who are licking their lips at the moment, watching you go into different lobbies on the last meaningful vote, hoping that they've got one over on you. Do you have a message for them? I, I think if... Um people think that they have done so jolly well, they should look at the vote on the extension to the 30th of June, when 99 Conservatives voted against and 80 abstained. That is a comfortable majority of the Parliamentary Conservative Party were against the extension to the 30th of June, let alone to the 31st of October. So I think people shouldn't rub their hands with glee too early. Eight years ago, David Cameron's coalition government was shaken by a record-breaking rebellion by Tory backbenchers, pushing for a referendum on EU membership. The pro-Brexit Conservatives for Britain group of Tory MPs helped to terrify David Cameron into having a referendum. After that referendum, they regrouped as the European Research Group, trying to hold Theresa May to delivering their kind of Brexit. There was some research done, but this was more about influence and power. It's an extremely powerful pressure group, yes. Around about maybe 100, 100 members or thereabouts, which is more than, more than I think, about two-thirds of all Conservative backbenchers, and therefore it's a very, very powerful group indeed. So they provide excellent briefing and... Um, they give you the line to take? Very Well, they don't need to. Once they give you a clear view of what's on offer, I think you naturally choose the, uh, the right road, shall we say. At Chequers last summer, Theresa May's Brexit plans firmed up. Anger bubbled up in the ERG's WhatsApp groups. ERG MPs threatened voting strikes, lining up for battle with number 10. Technology is just a means of communicating faster, but is it very useful? Yeah, of course it is. You bet. Again, it looks a bit like a, a party within a party, the WhatsApp group. Well, look, Deciding your own lines people chipping in, what's our line going to be on this, and then confirming a line, and then everybody's got to, intended to stick to the line. I think it's always very important in politics that there is message discipline. Oh, we're definitely not a party within a party. We don't have the discipline of a party, we don't have the structures uh, of a party, uh, and we are, we're a ginger group within the Conservative Party and no more. Attendance at the weekly ERG meetings surged. Scores of MPs suddenly started turning up. Senior figures in the ERG were regularly, it seemed, being plucked for ministerial office in the hope of neutralising the organisation's effectiveness. And infiltrators, spies, were spotted round the room. Um, I'm honestly not consumed with who the, who the, you know... They're all colleagues. They're all beloved brothers and sisters in the cause of conservatism and good governance. So I don't like to think of them as spies. There's no point. Uh, there's no point identifying them. There's no point talking about them, there's no point being mean-spirited about them, criticising them or anything else. But what I've always sought to do is make sure that the messages they received were the messages that I wish to have conveyed to number 10. Turns out he's a very popular man today. Late last year, the big names of the ERG decided Theresa May must go and demanded a vote of no confidence in her leadership. I think a coup is when you use illegitimate procedures to try and overturn somebody who is in office. She defeated this work. challenge, and under Tory leadership rules, that could mean she's safe until this December. Even after Theresa May survived the vote of no confidence, the ERG carried on talking about how the clock was ticking down to their Brexit date with destiny, the 29th of March. Their big problem was... It underestimated just how nervous Theresa May was about a no-deal Brexit. Her private thoughts, nothing like her public rhetoric. 
you'd underestimated oh, yes, how right. resistant she was oh, to no deal. Uh, that was your miscalculation. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yes, that was my miscalculation. I, I made the um, mistake of believing a British Prime Minister, uh, which actually historically can often be a mistake. Uh, I am making a criticism myself of a degree of naivety. Yeah. You've got Boris Johnson and David Davis, and you've got Dominic Raab and Esther McVeigh, you've got Penny Morden. You have streams of talent within the Conservative Party uh, who would be very capable of support of leading a proper Brexit. When a contest comes, it'll be a challenge to the ERG to unite around one contender. MPs in the group are already backing different pro-leave potential leadership candidates and reserving a cool reception for one in particular. Michael Gove is a man who I am absolutely sure seeks to do what he thinks is best in the nation's interests. What he has thought, though, has often stood at variance to some of the rest of us. Michael, not apart from anything else, he's a brother in Christ, and I'm going to respect the fact that he and I, if we're right about our faith, we've got a long time to spend together, and I'm not going to be critical of him. Steve Baker and his allies agonised. Theresa May could soften Brexit even more. They could even see it disappear altogether. <laughs> you failed. Well, we haven't yet failed. Uh, that we shall see. First three years haven't gone very well, have they? Are you saying to me that the UK will not now leave the European Union? That would definitely be failure. But I would be surprised if we didn't leave the European Union. But you must feel there's a heightened risk. Oh yes, I accept that. The risk is um, higher now than it was. Maybe history will say that we pushed too aggressively, but I think, I think there has been an equally uh, determined group led by the Chancellor and a number of senior ministers working to subvert the referendum result. And you know, that this has in every sense been a, a battle between competing, uh, competing sides. We were not the only players on this particular chessboard. And his side are 1-0 up as we stand here? Uh, to continue the chess analogy, it's stalemate. Not a gripping thought, perhaps, for political spectators, but it might be a realistic one. Gary Gibbon, Channel 4 News, Westminster.